So welcome to the first lecture of the third unit. In this lecture, we are going to talk about stability. And we'll be primarily discussing stability about uh, linear time invariant state systems. We have already seen that there are three basic uh, criteria for designing and analyzing control systems and controllers. Uh, the transient performance, and we have had quite a lot of discussion about transient performance and the transient performance specifications of various kinds of systems. The second is the steady state error, and the third is the stability. It is in, important for us to understand that uh, if, if the system is not stable, then talking about controlling the transient performance or controlling the steady state error is useless because the system is no longer in our control once it is unstable. So it's a very important parameter of a system. Now, the the first thing that we do today is, is to talk about the definitions of stability. What do you mean by a stable system? Right, and how how uh, how do we understand this concept? Right. So uh, the general notion of stability comes from the fact that the output of the system does not uh, grow beyond bound. So if if somebody who has not actually understood or really uh, technically uh, uh, understood the definition of stability. You, you give him two graphs and show him uh, uh, one decreasing with time and the other increasing with time about some function of time and ask him to tell you about which one is stable. He'll say that this one is stable because it's finally decreasing in time. And this is going growing beyond bounds, so it is unstable. So this is the notion of stability that we have. In general and this is actually what is uh, uh, more refined and then applied to controllers right so so here's how we define stability in terms of response of the system so we say that a linear time invariant system is stable if the natural response approaches zero if the natural response approaches zero as time approaches infinity Similarly, you can say that a linear time invariant system is unstable if the natural response, if the natural response grows without bound, grows without bound as time approaches infinity. And the third case would be this case when the, the linear time invariant system is marginally stable. And in this case, the response us neither grows nor decays. So the response neither grows nor decays, but remains constant, but remains constant or oscillates or oscillates as time approaches infinity. So 
So this is the natural response definition. You may recall that the total response of the system is equal uh, to the res response, the natural response, and the forced response. Right? The natural response is is primarily because of the system characteristics and the excitation of the system characteristics because of the initial conditions or the input. And the forced response is the response which is because of the input. So we have already seen the uh, separation of the two definitions of the two types uh, within the overall response. So a linear time invariant system is stable uh, if the natural response. So we're talking about the natural response being bounded, not growing with time, decaying. And that is our definition of stability. And why is that? It's because your your input could uh, you know lead to a response which is growing with time, right? And that is because of the input, right? If your input is unbounded, you're 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 giving an input uh, which is which is which is not uh, which is itself growing. So your 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 uh, your input is itself growing with time. So you're, you're expecting, it is expected that the output is also not going to decay with time. And what part of the output does not decay with time if the input grows? It's the forced response part because the forced response actually follows the input. So that is why we stick to the uh, the uh, uh, the natural response when we talk about stability in terms of uh, responses, but we can also uh, uh, because of this because of this uh, understanding that we have that the output could be unbounded because of the input and the output could be unbounded because of the system itself. We can we can uh, work out another definition of stability. Right, we can say that a system is stable if every bounded input yields a bounded output right this is actually a consequence of the definition of the stability based on the natural response and you can uh, refine this definition further by adding another line and say that a system is unstable if any bounded input yields an unbounded output. Okay. So this, this ensures that in case the output is unbounded, it is because of the uh, system. It is not uh, because of. It is not because of the. It is not because of the uh, uh, input, right? So, if the system is stable uh, for for all bounded inputs, that is, it yields a bounded output if it is stable. Uh, then, then it is stable. And in case any bounded input produces an unbounded output, then it is unstable. Right. So, this this definition of stability is called the bounded input, bounded output stability. This definition is called the bounded input, bounded output stability. So the only difference between these two definitions is that uh, 
for the definition based on natural response you talk only about natural response and decide on the basis of it whether the system is stable or not and for the case of bounded input bounded output stability you talk about the total response and decide on the basis of the total response whether the system is stable or not but of course you also have to consider inputs in this case and you are talking only about bounded inputs in this case uh, a loose definition of an input that or, or an output that is bounded it would be that the output or input or the the signal stays within some upper limit right so there is an upper limit m and the the input or output or any signal if it stays within this limit and you are able to say that it is not going to go beyond this limit right then it is uh, bounded and this 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 limit has to be some uh, real number right no matter how big it is but you should be able to say that for all time it will remain within this limit right we so could have positive and negative bounds and you can say that your signal will only vary between these two bounds it's not going to go out of this bound for any time then you say that this signal is bounded now what happens for unbounded signals is that <clears throat> is that you will not be able to put them within a bound for all times so if your signal has has uh, an exponentially increasing oscillatory part you cannot say that it will remain between some uh, some really real number plus m and minus m for all times so for uh, for time t greater than something it is always going to cross that bound right so so i hope the definition is clear now let us let us look at the relationship between uh, between the uh, stability of the system uh, let us look at the relationship between the stability of the system of the system and system poles right so we have already seen uh, 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 that the natural response of the system decays to zero uh, if the system has a negative real part so you have already seen that if your pole is here on the uh, on the s plane where well, this is your j omega and this is your sigma or your pole is here on the s plane right in the sense that it has it has a complex part but the real part is negative so you have already seen that uh, the 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 uh, when we do the laplace transformation of the uh, of the uh, partial fraction expansion of the system response we'll always find a negative exponential term if there is a negative real part so if there is a negative real part of the system pole negative real part will always imply a negative exponential term and a negative exponential term implies that the, that the response is decaying so if if your poles are in the left half plane of the of of this s plane if they are in the left half side of the s plane or the left half plane you'll say that the system is stable and in case any one pole is in the right half plane Right. even if there is just one pole in the right half plane then the system is unstable so all the poles have to be in the left half plane and if even one pole is in the right half plane right even one pole is in the right half plane then the system is unstable and we are talking about uh, please remember we are talking about closed loop transfer functions right so so you take the closed loop transfer function of a system or a plan and in order to ensure that the natural response decays to zero as time approaches infinity you have to say that stable system have closed loop transfer functions with poles only in the left half plane right so 
I'll write this down. Stable systems have closed loop transfer functions with with poles only in the left half plane. Right? And unstable systems and stable systems have closed loop transfer functions with poles with poles with at least one pole with at least one pole in the right half plane. You should understand that even if all the poles are in the left half plane, except for one pole, which is in the right half plane, right? This one pole is going to, this one pole is going to, one or two poles is going to add a part to the response, which which will have an increasing exponential term, right? So you have to understand this, that even if there is just one pole in the right half plane, the uh, the 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 part the, it is going to add a part which is going to increase with time. So uh, the response because of every other pole is going to die out, but this response because of one pole or a complex conjugate pole pair is going to increase with time and is going to basically lead to the system being unstable. Right. Now, there is one slight twist in the definition also. If you have poles of multiplicity more than one on the J omega axis, then also your system is unstable. Suppose you have two poles at, at S is equal to zero. That means your system has a component which is, say, one by S square. The closed loop transfer function has a component which is one by S square. You can see that if you do the inverse Laplace transformation of this, you will get you will get uh, uh, more than if you have more than one pole, you'll get you'll get a factor of uh, which is expon which is uh, in the time domain, you'll get say Laplace inverse of one by s square is t. Or for that matter, Laplace inverse. If you if you take any any uh, any multiplicity more than one, right, is going to be problematic, right? Uh, with, with the definition, right, of there is a factorial term also in this. So <clears throat> so the form of the response. I'm talking about the form of the response is going to have a factor, right? So if you look at this t now. Uh, this t is increasing with time. It's increasing with time. It is unbounded. So if you have two, two poles at h is equal to zero, you have a response that is unbounded. So in a similar way, poles of multiplicity one, which are complex conjugate, are also going to give you uh, unbounded responses, right? So uh, so there is one more thing that you have to add to this uh, relationship between poles and stability and instability of the systems and which is that which is that stable systems have closed loop transfer function with at least one pole in the right half plane or or poles of multiplicity multiplicity more than one more than one on the j omega axis. So for example, this is a pole of multiplicity one on the j omega axis, and more than one means there is another pole at this point on the j omega axis. Or this is a pole of multiplicity one on the j omega axis because it's a complex conjugate pole pair, and uh, uh, 
this is the pole of multiplicity one on the j mega axis and if you have another complex conjugate pole pair at the same place you have uh, you have multiplicity more than one so if you have multiplicity more than one as i have seen said in this case you have one by s square and in this case also you'll have a term which is a, which is a square although it will have in, it will have oscillations but it, the, 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 the inverse Laplace transform would be would would easily show you that the response is going to be unbounded, right? So unstable systems. They, these are the two definitions. Now, what about what about what about poles of multiplicity one? Poles of multiplicity one on the j omega axis. We have already seen they correspond to oscillations or they correspond to responses that neither increase nor decay with time. For example, if you have a one pole here, so one by S will correspond to a, uh, to, to one in the uh, time domain, right? So it will contribute to one in the time domain, which is, which is something that is neither increasing nor decaying with time. In a similar way, we have already seen that undamped systems have complex conjugate pole pairs on the geomega axis. So undamped systems, the oscillations don't damp out. The, the complex conjugate pole pair is on the geomega axis. So the third definition is going to be is going to be marginally stable systems have closed loop transfer functions with only imaginary axis poles of multiplicity one. Right, so you have marginally, so we call them marginally stable, right? Because the oscillations don't increase in time, and then don't, they don't decrease in time; they remain constant, right? Or the response remains constant; it does not decay with time. The natural response. So marginally stable systems have closed loop transfer functions. with only imaginary holes, sorry, of multiplicity one on the J omega axis. They may additionally have uh, poles on the left half plane, right? Uh, but that would not add to their uh, uh, marginal stability. That is only going to make that part of the response stable. So, so you can say that they may have they may have additional poles. Additional poles in the left half plane. So to summarize, uh, uh, if we see any pole on the right half plane or uh, a pole with multiplicity more than one on the geometric axis, we straight away say that the system is unstable. Right? And if all the poles are on in the left half plane, the system is stable. And if the poles are on the geomega axis, but the multiplicity is one, then we say that the system is marginally stable. Right. So, so we we you can understand that you have this uh, you have this distinction between stable, unstable, and marginally stable systems from the natural response definition. But this distinction is not present in the uh, in the Bebo stability definition. Weber stability definition only classifies systems as as stable or unstable. This is because marginally stable systems marginally stable systems are unstable according to the Bebo definition, right? Uh, so we can just write this down. So marginally stable systems. Are unstable according 
to the Weibo definition. And why is this? This is because of marginally stable systems, uh, there can be one unbounded input, uh, one bounded input that can lead to a bounded, uh, unbounded response. For example, uh, you have a system which is one by S. For example, the transfer function, the closed loop transfer function is one by S, right? And it's a marginally stable system because in the, uh, according to the natural response definition, it's a marginally stable system because the uh, the pole is on the geomega axis and it has multiplicity one. But if we analyze it from the BBO stability definition point of view, if we give this an input which which is a step input one by s, then you can see that your C S is one by S square. So which means that your C T is T. Right? So your your time your Although your input, your input is bounded, so a step input is a bounded input because you can say say that it, it remains within some bounds even when time goes to infinity. The output in this case is unbounded. So this is your output. C t is equal to t. It in, it increases with time as at time t stays to infinity. The output is also infinity. So all your although your system has a, a multiplicity pole of multiplicity one on the j omega axis, but but the output is unbounded for a bounded input, so it is not Weibo stable, right? So uh, according to the natural response definition, it is a stable system. It is a marginally stable system, but under the Weibo stability definition, it is an unstable system. So that is why we only have two classifications in the Weibo stability. Stability. So uh, the system is either stable or it is unstable under Weibo stability. Right now, uh, this is all about uh, stability and introduction to stability and the basic concept. We are going to talk about um, the test for stability in our next lecture. Thank you very much for listening.